Yo, what up? It's Tug from We Make Best, and we're back with another one of our infamous deck techs. And today we're going to be going over Royal Riptide. But real quickly, before we get into this video, we just want to thank FabDB for sponsoring us. As many of you already know, we are huge fans of brewing up some spicy decks with unorthodox cards, and that's all thanks to the card database here on FabDB. We use the search feature to easily find every single playable card for a hero and often look for the underplayed cards and try to see if we can break them. So if you're also a huge fan of brewing up the most jank decks possible, then check out FabDB. But now let's get back to this vid. Now to get into the video, to explain why we think this is the best way to play Riptide, we gotta go over the hero's strengths and weaknesses first. Riptide's main strength resides in his first hero ability. Whenever you play a card from your hand, you may put a card face down into your arsenal. This free reload allows us to skip over the main weaknesses of arrows, that being that they must be played from arsenal. When we remove this downside from arrows in our deck, we're left with an extremely above rate attack that all block for three, and they all present on hits. Now, how do we maximize this? We do this by combining the above rate zero cost arrows with an above rate zero cost go again action that we can play from hand. This makes Riptide have easily the strongest two card hands possible in flesh and blood. For example, if we were to play Lace with Blood Rot from hand, triggering Riptide and allowing us to load in a Searing Shot, then we attack for seven with the Searing Shot. If this attack hits, we just presented a two card 10, which is absolutely insane. But then we can also replace the Lace with any of the other ones or Premeditate or a ravenous rabble and we can also swap out the searing shots for other arrows such as drill shot bolton shot stuff like that and now we've just built a consistent shell for our deck so now that we've found ourselves a shell and our game plan let's push it to the max with our list we found that two card eights are very easily achievable with almost any hand we draw but we wanted to see if we could present this twice in a single turn giving us a consistent four card 16 to 20 points of value which honestly sounds absurd but quite achievable to do this, we incorporated 18 go again arrows in the form of Bolton shots, Sikkim shots, and the newest edition, Falcon Wings. These go again arrows easily carry any of our arrow buffs, turning them into must blocks for the opponent. But again, these must block attacks are two card hands for us. So because these arrows have go again and force at least a two card block from our opponent, we can then simply follow up with another two card eight straight after. This puts opponents in positions that if they don't block, they will be easily outvalued by our ridiculous rates. But if they do block, they'll still leak damage due to every attack being a breakpoint while also presenting on hits over the top and they lose their hand due to blocking, just putting us in a win-win situation. So let's quickly go over what we've landed on for our deck tech and we'll start it off with the main board. In the main board, we run 29 arrows, 18 of them being the go again arrows like I explained before. Then we also have seven of the zero for four arrows, but technically drill shot and searing shot are zero for fives if allowed to hit. Then lastly for the arrows, we run three infecting shot because it's just a one for seven. Next for the second most important part of this deck, we run 23 what we like to call reload cards. So we run all nine of the laces. These cards are zero for three buffs with powerful on hits that easily turn these hands into zero for four or five or even six if they're allowed to hit three ponder run i mean premeditate this is the best deck possible to abuse premeditate it's a zero for three that reloads for us to give any card that we want the buff then on top of that if any attack hits this turn we can produce a ponder to guarantee an arsenal for that turn essentially making this a free zero for six broken next up we got three seek and destroy just another broken zero for three that is a must block for most heroes if the seek and destroy does hit and it destroys their arsenal it's just another zero for six buff then to round out the buffs we just run two regular nimbalisms just as a flexible zero for three buff that can reload but we can also use it to buff both our arrows and our non-arrow attacks and then to go over our non-arrow attacks we simply see these as extra reload cards so we have three ravenous rabble and two scar for scar both of these just being zero for four go again attacks that reload an arrow for us to allow us to follow up with a very clean two card eight and to round out the other attacks we also have three in line strike so there's already a super versatile card but now add on top that it also reloads as well so in this deck this card literally does anything we need so that's it for the reload cards next up we'll talk over our four power cards i'll call them so we run two cash -ins. the main philosophy behind this is that we already explained that we want to play two card eights twice in one turn cash in gives us the ability to play three two card eights in one turn by arsling the cash in going to the next turn with our four card
card hand, play the cash in, go up to six cards and seeing if we can go two card eight three times in one turn. So super broken. And then next up, we run two rain raises. Uh, rain raises is especially good here because using this in the reaction step will actually reload us the card as well as force over our on hits over the top of their blocks at the same time. Making this card an easy zero for four as well if we just play two arrows per turn, which is what we do minimum. Now to round out the main board, we only run two of the legendary traps in the main. We low key only run them because they're blues, but they also have potential upsides to straight up end turns for the aggro decks we face. But yeah, we're not a huge fan of trying to play aggro and then we draw too many traps. But that's it for the main deck. Now we'll go on to the equipment. So to explain the equipment, first off, we run Crown of Dominion. We didn't need access to the extra arsenal slot for our game plan, so we don't need New Horizon. We also don't care about opting too much, so Skullbone Cross Wraps is also useless to our game plan. So all in all, we're just left with either Crown of Dominion or Crown of Providence. And in our opinion, the cash-ins just played way too well into our plan not to run. So that's why we landed on Royal Ripto. And then next up for the weapon, I'll go over the, our weapon and the tunic together because we kind of see them as a combo. Uh, we run Death Dealer and Biendle's Spring Tunic. How we see it, we don't need the aim counters from Barbed Castaway or, or Sandscale Great Bow and Dreadball is only conditionally powerful. So it was just an easy choice for us to pick Death Dealer as our bow. This bow also allows us to filter cards by pitching to Death dealer loading in a go again arrow and then drawing a card then we can attack with that go again arrow and follow up with our three remaining cards in our hand in the best possible order very simple to just pair the tunic counter with death dealer we just get to draw a free card every three turns off of our tunic counter very powerful combo then next up for the arm slot uh, we ended up on hornet sting over bullseye braces bullseye braces are just overshadowed by a built-in reload so we instead run hornet sting to allow us to cleanly block out breakpoint attacks if need be and then for our legs we run snapdragon skin Although we did have a lot of success with Perch Grapplers 2, Snaps allowed us to efficiently play out any of the awkward Ranger hands that we drew. Whereas the Perch Grapplers giving us an additional 2 block for our equipment made it a lot harder for our opponents to push the on hits onto us. So I would recommend testing both out for yourselves. Then lastly for the Quiver, we just use the Quiver of Abyssal Depths, just as a free remembrance for the fatigue matchups. And then that's it for the main board and equipment. I'll quickly go over the Cyborg plan before we get into some games. So real simple, we just run Sleep Darts for Dromai, fatigue shots for dash and guardians and then we have a pitfall rock slide traps plus the trench of sunken treasure as our package for icelander those traps actually work very well against the wounded bulls from icelanders as well as giving us extra resources into our heavily red deck and then lastly we have bullseye braces and skull bone in the sideboard if we need ab3 then that's it for the deck tech hopefully i explained everything you needed to know any questions chuck them in the comment and i'll get back to you but let's get into some games so game one we're up against a dash they won the die roll, I believe, and chose to go first. So turn zero for them. I noticed they started with induction chamber, so I'm not 100% sure whether they were going mid-range or full control just yet. But the dash ends up pitching a red to load their pistol, then another red to load the chamber and passing it over to us. So it's our turn. I know I should just use the blue to activate death dealer to load in the drill shot and draw a card to then allow us to either double arrow or double pump the drill shot itself. Then arsenal the cash in and look to play six card hand next turn. But f it, send the cash in and load in the drill shot. We draw into a blue Bolton and a red infecting shot. So this turn is gonna be nice. First, I lead off with a drill shot for four. This prompts a card from hand along with their arms equipment already to deny the on hit. We then activate our snapdragons on it giving it a go again. Play the lace with frailty from our hand, letting us load in the blue Bolton, making it a breakpoint go again attack. Then we swing in for five. The opponent gives us a three block from hand, taking two and the frailty token. That really hurts them if they want to pistol plan us. Next, we just pitch the blue to death dealer to load an infecting shot. We draw into a seek and destroy. So we play the seek and attack with the infecting shot for eight while coming in with two powerful on hits attached. So they quickly give us the rest of their hand and another piece of equipment. Then we end our turn happy to strip their entire hand, leak damage and take two pieces of armor all in our first turn. Pass it to them and they pass it back to us. So back to us, I pitch the align strike to activate death dealer loading in a falcon wing. Then we just attack for three, go again. They snap block it for three, then we follow up with a lace with inertia, loading in a searing shot and fire that off as well. They block using a blue T-bone, then reinforce the lineup. This is a clear tell to tell me they're on the full pistol plan this game, but all good. Leave them with one card in hand and we arsenal with a sickum shot and pass. So over to them, they just pistol us twice, pitching the second high octane from their hand. Mama ain't raised no blockers, so take it all and they pass it to us. Our turn, we got an interesting five card hand here. So we start by pitching the blue to attack with sickum for four, go again. 
They block for three, taking one, down to 37. I then follow up with a premeditate, loading in the Bolton shot to attack for six, go again, on hit ponder, and reload. So too many on hits, the dash quickly blocks it out using the rest of their equipment and a card from hand, but this is perfect for us. Now we just follow up by activating Death Dealer to load in this Endless Arrow and draw a card. We draw until it rain raises. So we fire up the Endless, they snap take four, bouncing it back to our hand. We pass and the Ponder triggers, drawing us into a Falcon Wing Blue. We arsenal the Falcon Wing since it has go again and it runs no risk of making our next turn awkward. And then we pass it over. So over to them, they pitch a red to load their pistol and play Sparker Genius from Arsenal for zero, grabbing a Teclo Core. Then they pass it back. So back to us, we've got an interesting turn coming. We attack for one go again opponent says no blocks and then we play rain raises from hand to make it three then we use the tunic to activate death dealer loading an endless arrow and drawing an infecting shot next we play the nimbleism and the premeditate and attack in for 12 with multiple on hits with the endless arrow the opponent blocks six taking six bouncing the endless back to my hand and creating a ponder for us the ponder ends up drawing us a bolton shot and we choose to arsenal that one since it has go again as long as we draw one of our many buff effects pass the turn so over to them we draw into no buff effects hoping they swing so we can block, but instead they play out a spark of genius, grabbing a plasma purifier, and then pass it back to us. Well damn, feels pretty bad, but we have to use these cards somehow. So we pitch three arrows to quiver, put some go again arrows and an infecting shot back into our deck, then we just attack in for three. Luckily, they do block three, then we just arsenal this red Bolton and pass it back. So over to them, they're finally getting their chance at a real turn against us. They lead off with a high octane into a booster T-bone for three. Have to block with our Hornet Sting, but shouldn't matter since Dash doesn't have too many on hits anyway. It reveals a seek and destroy, so no ping as well, damn it. But then they follow up by activating their chest, then playing out two more plasma purifiers. So god damn, now I'm a little bit scared but they pass it to us and we got to keep our five card hand. So let's go. Lead off by playing Lace with Inertia, then attacking for seven, go again on an on hit reload and Inertia token. Opponent blocks with two cards, taking one and the Inertia. I load in the Falcon Wing and play the Lace with Blood Rot, then attacking for six, go again on hit Blood Rot. Opponent then blocks six, then we just arsenal the Sikkim shot and pass it over, but they quickly pass it back. So we get to run back another five card hand. We pitch the blue to Sikkim shot for four, go again, which they quickly take. Then we use Use one of the two floating to activate Death Dealer, loading in Falcon Wing and drawing into a Drill Shot. Then we fire that off for three, go again, which they take again. Then we follow up with a Ravenous Rabble for four, go again, loading in a Syrian Shot, which again they take. And lastly, we end our chain by firing off the Syrian Shot for four, which they block three, but then take one from the arrow and one from the on hit. All up being a four card 16, while still getting an arsenal and putting them down to 10 life. This turn just shows how crazy strong the rates are on this deck if our opponents try to not block. Absolutely insane. But we arsenal the drill shot and pass it over. Over on their turn, they're just loading up and firing off two pistol shots for five damage each. No carers, take 10, and then they pass it back to us. Our turn, little awkward due to our arsenal card not having go again, but we make the best with what we have. So I go East strike for five, go again, sinking the lace with frailty. They block for three, taking two, going down to eight. Then I play the lace with blood rot and fire off the drill shot for seven, which they give us their whole hand for. Then we just arsenal the Sikkim and pass. They pass it straight back. Our turn, I play the Seek and Destroy and swing in for seven go again with the powerful on hit. I do it in this order to try and bait them into overblocking the Sikkim so I can land the Searing Shot on hit later in this turn. Then the dash took the bait. They played a movable from Arsenal to block out the Sikkim. I then activate Death Dealer loading in Searing Shot and drawing a Lace with Inertia. Then I swing in for four with Rabble which they block three taking one down to seven. Then two cards in hand means I play the Lace and fire off the Syrian for seven so they can't block it out. They block three of it taking five down to two and they get an inertia token with it. Then we pass it over. On their turn they just pitch the red to the pistol and then attack us for two. We take two down to 22. They pass it back. Our turn just gonna pitch the trap to load in the falcon wing drawing a bolton shot. Then we fire off the falcon which they block out then follow up with a rabble for four loading in the red bolton. They block using a sink below then we just follow up with the bolton for four which they just block three taking one down to one. Then we just Arsenal the Bolton shot and pass. Over on their turn, they just play a Teclo core and then pass it back to us. So back to us, we have a five card hand here, looking to end the game. We play the Premeditate to make the Bolton shot a five, go again on hit, ponder and reload. Do that, fire it off. They give us two cards from their hand. Then we just follow up with the Nimbleism into 
Scar for Scar for seven to end it through their last two cards in their hand. GG. So hopefully that game displayed the outright offensive power of this deck. And as you can see, the rates are absolutely insane. But hopefully these gameplay videos show what we were going for with our Reptide build. Tell us what you guys think of our build and we'll leave a link to the deck list in the description like always for you guys to test it out yourselves. But thank you for watching all the way to the end. Appreciate you guys. But for now, we out.